Don't you love a good sweep? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. On today's show, we're talking your San Diego Padres sweeping those pesky San Francisco Giants. Joe Musgrove, whether he should be getting paid. Mackenzie Gore, NL Rookie of the Year. Manny Machado for MVP. Will Myers heating up. All that and more, guys. You know what you're listening to. Let's get started. You are locked on Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Padres podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for Monday. Oh, and what a beautiful Monday it is, May 23rd. As always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You can find some of my baseball-related work over at Just Baseball. It's where I recently wrote about Robbie Ray and him being a bust so far there. Just a few words, nothing crazy, but you could check that out. You can follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, which I'm pointing to right now. And you would see me pointing if you're watching the YouTube. Locked on just on YouTube. Let's get those subscriber numbers up. And at LO underscore Padres if you want some dank Padres meme. Not the dankest Padres meme. I'm pretty with the memes. But let me tell you, some of y'all out there, you're pretty good on the Padres Twitter. I have to shout you guys out every now and then. And I'm in a weird, uh, cocky, little smug mood today, ladies and gentlemen. You know why that is? It's quite simple, really. It's because those San Diego Padres went out and they swept those San Francisco Giants I had heard so much about. I talked with my buddy again, Ben Ben Caspic on Friday. We're talking about, oh, they won 107 games. They've been getting unlucky and what have you and all this stuff. And, oh, the expected ERA. Well, how about this? How's win? How about just winning games? That's right. The Padres swept them. Made them look stupid, actually. Made them look silly. Ladies and gentlemen, it's literally silly. Literally silly. And I enjoyed every second of it. This is by far, I'm coming from the big, top rope. Here we go so far. By far the most satisfying series that the San Diego Padres have played all year because they won in fairly dominating fashion, especially the last game, which was yesterday. And we're going to talk all about that, guys. All right. Let's. Everybody sit back. Maybe I got an ice cold water here. Mm. If you see me on YouTube, I am rocking a nice sunset palm tree looking shirt. All right. It's from one of my favorite video games ever. Whoever tweets at me or leaves a comment about what this is from. You are my best friend. Get into it. Let's start with Friday's game, which saw Sean Manaya. Be not in Zach Dominant, but here's the thing. Sean Manaya isn't necessarily that type of pitcher who goes out and delivers eight innings of shutout. So I wasn't really expecting, especially for a team like the Giants that loves drawing walks and loves hitting a lot of fly balls. So I was expecting Manaya to not necessarily have best stuff. But even, ugh, even still, gotta hit when that happens when you nearly puke in your own mouth. Ugh, it's the worst. Sorry, sorry to make you all grossed out. But six innings. Four earned runs across five hits, two walks, and five Ks. He had 96 pitches. ERA at four right now, but I don't think that really tells the full story for Sean Manaya, who's been still very solid. He actually 16 whiffs uh, in total in this adding, which is pretty solid, especially on his sinker, which is very lethal even when uh, you take into account the fact that he does give up a lot of hard-hit stuff. Uh, even still looked really good, in my opinion. And the Giants, you know, they were due for a little bit of some offense here um, in this game. They kind of strike first with some sacrifice flies and whatnot. And the big, big thing that happens, unfortunately, is Darren Ruff going yard twice off of Sean Manaya. Darren Ruff, who every now and then just looks like he's Barry Bonds and came out of nowhere for the San Francisco Giants. So he's definitely a hitter to watch out for. Him and Yastrzemski are probably some of their best home run type of players that I'd say that that instill the most fear in me currently. Brandon Belt, too, but Brandon Belt's been like, really off lately and he's been in and out of the lineup so not right now with brandon belt who i don't even think played did he play in one game this series i don't believe he did yeah yeah i don't think brandon belt played in one game this series so that was a nice break for the padres but 
all that said, that's really where the big mistakes come from uh, in this case, uh, for the most part, when it comes to Sean Mania, who I think looked pretty good. And again, the four ERA, I do not believe tells the full story. And I know that he's had some outings where he's looked a little bit rough, but Mania is also one of those guys who's going to reach like, you know, 180 to maybe even 200 Ks, maybe if he's, you know, and he's consistent, he's healthy. He'll definitely give you innings. This is not a guy who is inefficient. This is not a guy like we're worried about with Blake Snell, who sometimes has those outings where he, he labors through three and a third innings like he did in his debut. Uh, Manaya is just there. And that's the thing with the starting pitching is, although he did give up those four, there's a couple of mistakes to Darren Ruff, who I felt was due. And also, it happens. You know what I mean? it's This is a, a, a pitcher that I'm not expect, exactly expecting. Uh, to go out and shut out, like I said. And also, they just don't lose games. That's what it feels like. They don't have starting pitchers who lose games. Even four runs isn't that bad. You know, it's not a quality start, but it's still pretty good. And we'll talk about the the master of quality starts in a little bit. Best believe that. Um, Nabil Krizmat in this game also makes an appearance. Tim Hill, uh, fresh off the IL, he shows up for half a second. And unfortunately, Luis Garcia, which we got to talk about really quickly, he ends up giving up. Uh, and, and blows the save uh, for the Padres, which is, believe it or not, one of the only few blown saves I could think of because usually Taylor Rodgers has been all the time, but he was unavailable for this game, uh, unfortunately, for the Padres. But uh, Luis Garcia came out, and what sucked is after two strikeouts of both jo- Joey Bart and Luis Gonzalez, Joey Bart, who is super strikeout uh, prone, you get Yastrzemski reaching on an infield single, Darren Ruff, Ruff walking, Jack Peterson draw, drawing walk, and then Wilma Flores getting single. It was unfortunate. I've talked about a lot how right when it seems like a Padres reliever this year has been developing some confidence that you believe, some trust, that they tend to blow it. Uh, I think Stephen Wilson from last weekend is the perfect example. You had Robert Suarez, who had his implosion the opening day, and then later on in the He starts blowing it up, too. You had Luis Garcia. That's kind of the unfortunate part with the Padres right now. And they still have some good bullpen arms. But as I've said a lot of times, yes, you can upgrade the bullpen. And I don't think it's going to be that crazy of a fix. I do believe this bullpen is going to get better. And also, they have a lot of injuries right now. But uh, we do have to mention, I mean, I mean, I just... Jake Cronenworth, who I want to spend on some time today, he goes one for three in the game with two RBIs, thanks to a home run. He was due, ladies and gentlemen. Thank the Lord. Uh, May Machado, three for five in this game with a double, an RBI, and also a stolen base, because why not? If I'm not mistaken, he has more stolen bases than that alleged speedster, Trey Turner. I've heard he's fast, but uh, where's the steals? Uh, That's (laughs) all I'm saying, man. I am drunk on power today, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. Uh, Jerks and Profire going through for five in this game as well. Uh, Will Myers, which is really nice. And Will Myers, I do want to mention, he's batting 242 right now after the weekend. Uh, not exactly incredible, but around the career norm in terms of batting average for Will Myers. Hopefully he can keep get those walks back to it. I know he just basically rejoined the team, but it does say a lot. Not to pick on this last guy, Trent Grisham, who th- does able to draw a walk in this game, but not to pick on him too much. But it does say a lot that Myers just kind of came back. And also, we kind of know what Myers is already, and he's still doing more for us seemingly than Trent Grisham right now. So that's very unfortunate. Um, Alfaro had a couple of ridiculous swings. He did get a, a double in this game, though. 0 for 5 from um, the Padres' first baseman, who must not be named, uh, over the course of May, 254, 296, 328 for a slash line. It's coming back down to earth. He's regressing mightily. The key, however, though, is because he was basically like a a borderline, like top two first baseman in the month of, of April. Can he kind of just be okay? But it is officially, we are on the watch being like, okay, is he going to start regressing to being one of the the worst first baseman again? We'll have to see. We'll have to see, but I do have faith that he can at least be okay. You know what I mean? That's that's my faith that he can just be a one to two war sort of player at this point. That's all the Padres can really hope for. But before we talk about the rest of the games and talk a little bit about Jake Cronenworth, guys, let me take a second to talk to you about the best protein bars in all the land. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. This is just a perfect day. I mean, we're talking about the the Padres getting a sweep, and I'm talking to you about built bars, the best thing ever, guys. I love brownies. Let me tell you. But you know what I love more? Brownie batter, batter up as the good folks say. Uh, Sometimes I eat half the batter just while I'm making the brownies. Imagine if you could lick that brownie spatula clean and get some protein in, all right? Well, uh, say no more. 
Built Bar has you covered, guys, with the new brownie batter puffs, ladies and gentlemen. They are very yummy with 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 17 or hold on, and only seven grams of sugar. Brownie batter puffs are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. And you need to pick me up. If you're a Padres fan, you might not need to pick me up right now. I, I know, I know. I know a lot of y'all sitting right now and you're just like, oh, come on. I mean, we're, we're doing good. I don't need anything to pick me up. But when it comes to replacing your candy bars with better healthy food and food that also just tastes, frankly, really, really good. So don't worry about losing the taste. Built Bar has you covered, guys. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15%. That's right, 15% off at built.com, LOCKED15, the promo code. And guys, I also want to say, do me a favor and go check out the Locked On Now podcast. It is really good. It's basically kind of a uh, a daily 20-minute or so sort of wrap-up all things from all of our local experts. I make a couple cameos on there every now and then too. It's really cool. MLB games, but they also give you the latest stories in all of sports. It's a really great catch me up. I know I listen every day. Go check that out wherever you get your podcasts. All right, let's continue the celebration. This is just a celebration. This is the pod. This is a podcast about being happy. And I hope that you're being happy. I hope that you don't touch that dial. You know, don't press the skip ahead 30 button. You know what I mean? Don't, don't exit out the episode. I hope you're just vibing and having a good time. Right, enjoying the sweep that the Padres had this weekend. Um, also, I, it should be mentioned that because of the blown save, we did go to extra innings, and it should be brought up by the way that Jerickson Profar uh, was the one who ended up getting a single, and as well as I'm sorry, Manny Machado. I, I somehow haven't talked about Manny Machado, and that's o- almost because I'm not tired of talking about him, but I worry that if I talk about him. And then I keep saying sort of the same things. You know what I mean? Like, is that possible, right? Like, is it possible for me to actually get people a little bit, oh, come on, man. Like, I know. I know he's great. What else are you going to tell me? Well, what can I say? He gets a double in this game, and then Jerickson Profire drives him in. They end up getting the save with Robert Suarez. He made it scary for a second, 8-7. to seven, uh, But still, uh, that's the end of that game. Let's talk about Saturday. A true pitcher's duel. And by the way, it doesn't always happen. Like, I know that we always get excited by the matchups on paper when it comes to baseball. We often get very excited and we say, oh, it's Corbin Burns versus Max Scherzer. And then it ends up not being nearly as big of a pitcher's duel, especially in today's game, it feels like, right? But that absolutely happened in this one. The Padres won, of course, by a score of 2-1, to one, but it was a great game. And let me tell you, if not for the heroics of hopefully future MVP Manny Machado, this one could have gone, you know, not the best way. Uh, Manny Machado hits a home run in the top of the third inning, which was lovely. Uh, and then Trent Grisham hits a sacrifice fly, actually, in the top of the sixth inning. And if I'm not mistaken, was that Machado that was on base? Give me one second, guys. No. Machado does do so. He makes a good play in this game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, defensively. Joe Musgrove, he gets the win. Seven innings. No earned runs, four hits allowed, three walks, four. I know that the walks and the strikeouts aren't the most impressive. I get it. You know, he didn't necessarily make it generate the most whiffs of any start of the year. In fact, he only had eight. All right. Um, but he kept, you know, the ball in the park. But for the most part, Musgrove labored. And for a bullpen that's been struggling, while quality starts don't always tell you the full story, uh, I think that with this team, it is very huge how often Padres starters can get quality starts, right? That they can at least give you six innings and they won't give you more than three runs, right? That means a lot for a bullpen and an offense that isn't necessarily, you know, super powered, incredible, right? That they're not blowing the hatch off the roof or whatever term. I can't think of a term right now um, you want to use. Uh, Musgrove was great. And in fairness, Carlos Rodon was actually pretty good too. Manny Machado made him pay and was a pesky little punk as he can often be. Oh, that little Manny! Oh man, I'm losing my mind. I gotta, I gotta bring it, bring it back in. Six innings for Rodon, but unfortunately, like I said, for him, uh, two earned runs on five hits. He also walked four and struck out six. He looks pretty good there too. Uh, but basically, that's all to report about this game, uh, for the most part. When it comes to it, Joe Musgrove, who I'm actually think I'm gonna do an episode about on Tuesday. I want to spend more time. Well, time. I want to spend more time talking about Joe Musgrove in detail. I want to talk about, you know. 
and and it's funny because I saw Kevin Acey of the San Diego Tribune actually tweet like Joe Musgrove and the S turned into a money sign. A lot of people were saying that Manny Machado said pay that man. The Padres first baseman was saying how much of a great impact he was. Obviously, the players are going to say, yeah, pay the good player. Of course, they're going to not. You know. Yeah, I don't think we should pay Joe Musgrove, uh, Kevin. You know that? You know that? Tell your readers this. I don't think we should pay Joe Musgrove. Of course, they're going to say that. But it is an interesting point. Um, and I'm going to share more of my thoughts on Wednesday. I want to make my episode more about that, as well as the game recap against these upcoming Brewers games. But my vibe is just, man. I was so confident, and in fairness, I'm not going to take credit and start doing the I told you so sort of thing, because I don't think many people thought Joe Musgrove was incapable of repeating what he did last year. Um, currently sitting at an astounding ERA of 1.9, whip under 1. Yes, he's not necessarily drawing the most amount of strikeouts in the world, and yes, his last two starts, he's had three walks in both both against the Braves, pretty good hitting team, and the San Francisco Giants, another pretty good hitting team. But nonetheless, uh, he's been awesome at just simply not allowing runs and for being consistently there for a team that needs it. Right. So shout out to Joe Musgrove. He's been awesome. Curveball, slider, and not to mention his fastball, which I mentioned um, a a, a week or so ago, has the biggest, the highest spin rate among all qualified starters when it comes to his four-seam fastball. That's right, the highest in the league. And you might be saying, oh, well, that doesn't tell the full story. I know, but Dylan Cease, that's a name right there. You might have heard of Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease is my personal pick to win the Cy Young this year. You know that? Yeah, uh, for the American League, I should say. Um, what's it called? Uh, I just think that Musgrove has been, he's just been incredible. Uh, he's been incredible. He's in great company. Like I said, with Dylan Cease, he's got Garrett Cole there, Zach Gallon, Julio Urias. Yeah, spin rate does matter, and it shows that while Musgrove's fastball, just to sum it up, pretty. You know, I'm not an expert on all things stats, but when it comes to Musgrove, it shows that yes, the velocity on that fastball isn't necessarily going to knock your socks off. In fact, let me see what the average velocity in this game was. It was actually 95. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was 93 miles an hour. Yeah, exactly. So it's not necessarily the fastest fastball in the world, but it can rise in the zone and he can manipulate it very well inside corners, depending on the batter. Love to see it from Joe Musgrove. Last thing I want to mention, though, is Jake Cronenworth. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, I did see some people saying when Tatis gets back, does this guy have to head to the bench? Uh, The answer to that is probably no. Um, Let's keep in mind that heading into this year, Jake Cronenworth was third among all second basemen in baseball since the start of 2020 in total F4. Only Brandon Lowe and I believe Marcus Simeon uh, ranked above him because Marcus Simeon went God mode last year, obviously. He's been struggling this year. Um, That, that, you know, you can't just take him out of the lineup so quickly. He actually goes 0 for 4 in this game with 3 Ks. I will say this, though. This is not a... I'm not saying I'm giving up on him. But the people who are concerned and a little bit annoyed and frustrated... We're officially at the 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 um excuse me. We're officially at the point in the season in which you can absolutely raise that. Because the beginning of the year, one thing that I mentioned about Cronenworth was, you know, the first month of the season, you know, still had a decent on base percentage, if I'm not mistaken. Let me bring that up right now. 215, 344 on base. It's pretty good, right? Like I know he wasn't hitting for power, so you want him to hit for average because he's not a power threat necessarily. But this so far, 186, 247 this month. And that's what's concerning. And he's whiffed at some more pitches lately, not drawing enough contact. I'm wondering if maybe he shouldn't be the leadoff hitter. And granted, I will say this. Granted, the Padres don't necessarily have a great leadoff hitter right now. I think Tatis probably is the rightful replacement in the leadoff spot, probably going forward when, if he comes back. I will say that, but... Cronenworth, to me so far, especially when you look at the total numbers of where he's batted, I know you can't put him in the cleanup spot or even the three-hole necessarily based on how poor his production has been. I get that. But, you know, it's it's definitely concerning that he's not hitting the ball particularly hard. It's not like he's getting super unlucky. Say this isn't Julio Rodriguez and Jesse Winker of the Seattle Mariners, for anyone who keeps up with American League stuff. Those guys were getting really unlucky with some hard-hit stuff. Cronenworth is not seeing the ball as well. He's playing a good glove. I still love his versatility, but you're you're allowed. I give you permission because as everybody knows, I'm the king and you guys can only do what I tell you. I'm kidding. I'm being facetious. But in all seriousness, I definitely say 
there is a genuine concern with Jake, Jake Cronin with right now. He can turn it around. And by the end of this Brewer series, we might, he might've hit two home runs, hit for a cycle, made a great defensive play. That's fine. But he does have a little bit longer of a leash. And I will say some people might be saying, well, why are you so out on Grisham and Alfaro? Well, those guys, well, Alfaro, first of all, has been bad for a long time and he's still not very good. Just look at his at-bats. Oh my God, where Alfaro? I still got love for him though. He did have a double in the Friday game, but Grisham, Grisham, it's been four since the second half of 2021. I'll keep saying the set. Second lowest weighted on base. Next to Cody Bellinger since the second half among all qualified outfielders. And tied for the worst total war. So it's not like his defense has been so incredible, right? Jay, uh, Jay Corner, uh, I'm sorry, Cody Bellinger and Trent Grisham. Minus 0.3 F4, right? That's not good. And don't get me, and the other thing is this is Cody Bellinger, his uh, defense isn't that bad either, but they aren't the type of defenders that are going to carry based on only that, based on the way they've been hitting. And Grisham is not hitting up for enough power and not walking enough to make up for the fact that he's striking out way too much. Um, and he's not putting the bat on the ball. So that's my thing. With Cronenworth, he was literally one of the five best second basemen in baseball since the beginning of 2020. So that's my thing, especially for a position that isn't necessarily stacked right now, as maybe it was in the you know, circa 2017 Brian Dozier when he was still a thing type of, you know, thing. So that would be what I would say about that. Definitely be careful, everybody, because Jake Cronenworth, one of the unfortunate things, I thought he was money. Uh, Jake, we need you, man. Is he hurt? I don't, I hope not. But uh, I have to say, though, about the leadoff thing, one last point before we um, move on to the next game. I will say, though, that with Cronenworth in the leadoff spot, it's not like we have an immediate replacement. I mean, the Padres are using jerks and profile Will Byers in cleanup spots right now, and they're still winning all these games. That just goes to show you how good, in fairness, both the first baseman and especially Manny Machado has been. Um, I personally wouldn't mind seeing Hassan Kim in the leadoff spot. That's just me. Maybe even give Azokar, who actually has uh, goes one for three in this game with a walk, maybe give him some reps at, uh, at the leadoff spot. I don't know. But Kim, he's had shown a better eye at the plate. I know his on-base percentage isn't blowing the world apart, but he just looks better, you know? And it looks like hes he just seems to be driving the ball a little bit better. So Kim might not be a bad one to have. But again, I trust Bob Melvin. Hopefully, they'll, they'll figure this out in this leadoff sort of dilemma that the Padres have. Let's talk about the last game. And the last game, ladies and gentlemen, is the one that we just get to celebrate. The one that we just get to prance around and we get to put our hands up in the air like we just don't care, right? And sing our favorite song on the radio, the DJ song. I'm, I don't know why I'm doing Party in the USA lyrics right now. But the Padres sweep the San Francisco Giants on Sunday yesterday thanks to a 10-1 victory that was over from the damn start as far as I'm concerned. This game, Alex Wood, and this is beautiful because Alex Wood in this game, only two innings. He gives up five earned runs on eight hits, walks two strikes out four across 73 pitches. His ERA bloated all the way up to 4.82 on the year. It was around like a, a, low, a low three, uh, a high three, I should say, like three, eight uh, heading into the game. And the Padres absolutely lit him up. And I think I deserve some crap for this. That's right. I deserve some crap because I personally, I've mentioned this very, uh, many times, I didn't want Nick Martinez. I wanted Alex Wood or Alex Cobb and some other guys. I forgot who the other starting pitchers. I actually, I think I said Andrew Heaney at one point, if I'm not mistaken. But there were some other starting pitchers that I liked for the fifth or sixth spot in the rotation more than Nick Martinez. But let me tell you, Alex Wood has not been very impressive. And Ben Kaspik of Lockdown Giants talked about that on our Friday episode. Go check that out. And by the way, some mean YouTube comments from some people being very mean to Ben. Ben's a really good guy. Yeah, he could be a little bit of a homer, but kid's really smart, man. And he's a good guy. He's just telling you why they might be playing poorly. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't hating on the Padres. This I love Ben. Everybody be nice to Ben. Um, in this game, things start off with Will Myers. By the way, yeah, we have to talk about Will Myers. Like I said, um, it's a little bit discouraging how he, as an outfielder, comes in and immediately at least seems to be providing more value with the bat than Shin Grisham has. Uh, Myers three for five in this game with a double three ribbies on the day. He does have a strikeout, but also who cares? Um, the Padres first baseman one for five in this one, which wasn't great. Jerks and Profar, he goes two for six. Profar quietly been hitting a little bit better lately, by the way, um, has a hit in each of his games since May 15th. Very quietly. 
Not necessarily a lot of multi-hit games, but since that May 15th game against Atlanta, hasn't been hitting for a lot of uh, home run power, but he has two doubles in there, and he's hitting, and just overall, he's walking a decent amount, and he's playing a lot of decent uh, left field. Uh, this was from an, a somewhat unverified source, but via Twitter, I found someone who wrote an article about Stephen Wilson not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken. Shout out to the homie, what's your name on here? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, Padres data daily. No, who did I retweet recently? Come on, look through the locked on Padres account. This is why you have to be prepped before Grant Foucher. Shout out to my homie out there. There are only five players with six or more defensive runs saved that have a 115 plus WRC plus and jerks in profile is one of them. That says a lot, man. You know what I mean? Like he, if he can just be a 110, 115 WRC plus guy and be a pretty good defensive player, that's better than Tommy Pham last year. Because Tommy Pham was such a minus defensively that even when he was hitting, we were like, oh, man, this is – I mean, he's walking a lot and stuff, and he's been solid, but, man, Tommy Pham was not a good uh, – a little bit of the, kind of the enemy of Padres Twitter and whatnot ever since what happened in the last game. But, yeah, since May 17th – or May 15th, I'm sorry, uh, Jerks and Profar, at least one hit in each game, including a bunch of multi-hit games. Over this break, he goes three for five on Friday – two for five on May on Saturday, and then two for six in this game. The Jerks and Profar series. I did forget to mention this. In Friday's game, there was uh, some fans, and Jerks and Profar was very upset about it, that apparently I had saw he went to throw the ball to a Padres fan in the stands and said it went to a Giants fan, who then threw it like back at him in a way that could have been dangerous. They were throwing trash at him and stuff. Well, take that. I wish I could flip the bird on camera, but take that, Giants fans. I will say this, guys. Uh, let's not generalize. I do not like to generalize. I will say, though, this was a bad week weekend for fans, especially if you've been monitoring the Tim Anderson situation and all that stuff. That I'm not going to get too much into, but the Yankees fans booing him is not a great look uh, as far as I'm concerned. But, um, you know, it's that's not a good look for the Giants fans whatsoever. That, that's really classless. But again, I don't want to generalize. And also, I, I, in fairness, I'm not from the California area. I don't know exactly what it's like out there. But I will say fans everywhere can just be really, really bad. Um, but I love that the Padres came out and just absolutely balled out, just absolutely taking a dump on the San Francisco Giants, man. Let me tell you, in this game, like I said, Jake Cronenworth, he comes alive a little bit, getting two RBIs on the day with a double two for five. In total, who else we got here? Who am I missing? Yeah, Will Myers goes three for five. Hassan Kim gets two hits in this game too, including a double in RBI. Austin Nola gets a double. And Azokar. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. All right, moving on to the... Of course that's not it, ladies and gentlemen. We got to talk about him. Manny Machado. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, he's a monster. He's an absolute monster. And he came to play. He came to play in this game, going four for four, scoring three runs. He drove in two RBIs and had three doubles and a triple. Four, it is a four extra base hits on the day. If I'm not mistaken, tying his, that is his career best for most multi-hits. Hold on, most extra base hits in a game. I think I saw that from either AJ Castleball or Dennis Lynn. My apologies for not attributing that properly. He even drew an intentional walk, guys. That's how much fear. I would walk him, too. I'd walk him, too. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I want to see. Keep keep an eye on this. I want to see, based on the way. Now, Padres have been very good in situational hitting. I will say that this year. They've been driving guys in when they need to, but and that's why they've been winning. But I will say, I'm wondering if some teams might look at this and say, you know, let's just walk him. Because this is one of the objectively, the one player on this team that you're like, I just do not ever want to face this guy. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not as simple as that, right? Even when your team is performing super, super well, you kind of wonder. You just don't want that extra base runner. The, the math just doesn't add up, right, with total runs and expected runs and stuff like that. You don't want to just intentionally walk everyone who's pretty decent on the other team. But I would say I, I wouldn't be surprised if in this Brewers series that Brewers pitching is like, you know what? It's, uh, no, you know, one out. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, just walk Machado. You know what I mean? Just walk him. We'll see, guys. He actually, uh, um, in one of his doubles on the game, it wasn't um, an, an actual double. He ran after the Giants' defense, kind of like lollygagged it. It was a ball that was smoked off of Brandon Crawford, by the way. Brandon Crawford, by the way, remember when he was like fourth in NL MVP voting last year? Which, by the way, I 
totally get. I mean, he was on super winning team and was really good last year, but uh, he has a rough day at shortstop making, not making plays that I'm used to seeing him be able to make, but you know, Machado runs on that moment, running to second hustling that some people have mocked him for not doing before. Absolutely love to see it. One thing I will say, I'm going to be mean for a second. Machado running to second there when he didn't necessarily have to and just kind of trying to get that extra extra bag. I will say that if they view – remember when the Padres got blown up by the Giants early on in the year and they didn't like the whole stolen base thing or the bunts? Well, it's just – it's fine. You're allowed to do what Machado did, and I just hope that the Padres know that that too. You're allowed to keep going. You're allowed to beat up on them. And not as a retaliation for them beating up on you, but just in general. Be, get into their bullpen more. You know why? Because we want the Giants to lose more games. You know why? Because they're in the division. You always try, and I agree with Gabe Kapler when he says, I don't understand why in baseball, just one side has to stop trying. That only one side is allowed to try at some point because of these unwritten rules. And I agree with him 100%. Um, and the Padres certainly kept their foot on the gas pedal here. And it was great. Offensive explosion. Myers, he had a ground rule double in this one at one point. Myers has been hitting the ball a lot better, um, barreling it just a tad bit more. Just bat to ball skills have been much better for him. Uh, and I like that. You've seen the bat coming alive for him. Have not seen that with Grisham, which is what we need. And have not seen that with necessarily Jake Cronenworth as much. But overall, I mean, I don't know what else to say on this series. The last thing we have to talk about is Mackenzie Gore. Six innings in this game, one earned run on three hits, two walks, and six Ks. Let's talk about that adding really quickly. Let me just make sure I have all the stats here uh, in front of me just on the whiff percentage and stuff. But the only thing that happens in this game is the one earned run that he ends up giving up on a sacrifice fly, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from Wilmer Flores. Bottom of fourth inning, they did hit him pretty hard. I will say that. Bottom of the fourth inning, clearly the Giants hitters were due. They get a walk from Darren Ruff. Mike Yastrzemski nearly hits something into out to the East Coast uh, with the next hit. And then Wilmer Flores making really good contact with the ball, by the way, uh, hitting a sacrifice fly. Thankfully, then they get Evan Longoria and Brandon Crawford to fly out. But I will say that one inning did show you like they did manage to make some good contact there. Whether or not it's because they were due or whatever, uh, that's totally fine and totally um people's opinions but in this game 11 whiffs seven on his four seam fastball i like a little bit more of a mixture 64 percent of his pitches were fastballs that lovely four seam fastball that's one of the best overall pitches among any padres starter yeah even better than some of joe musgrove's pitches among any padres starter 17 percent i'm sorry 19 percent sliders 14 percent hold on i'm sorry 19% curveballs and 14% uh, sliders. So throwing some off-speed stuff and making it look good. He doesn't use it a lot, but it's okay because if the fastball is playing already, if it's got some movement to it, and he locates, by the way, the corner is really well with this thing, and he trusts the fastball. He can get up to 97 sometimes, <laughs> practically 98. Gore just looks so confident out there, and I love it. And the fact that he's succeeding only off of the fastball right now while maybe slowly incorporating some of his other pitches, is such an encouraging sign. I talked about early on in the season that I didn't necessarily love that it was like exclusively fastball, but he shows that depending on the start, he throws some more off-speed stuff. I'd like to see a little bit more of the change up, but even still, curveball and slider look really, really good. Sometimes I can see why maybe he doesn't like throwing them too much. They do hang up in the zone a little bit, and maybe there's a fear that if batters were prepared for it, if they weren't, you know, so afraid of the forcing fastball and how fast that thing is and how much it rides up in the zone sometimes, maybe if they weren't so afraid of it, you know, they would be they'd be able to mesh on some of those off-speed stuff, right? Now I don't want to say mesh, that's a little bit mean and a little bit uh exaggerated, but 90, you know, 87 miles an hour on that slider on average, it's it's a it's a it's quite a change in speed for hitters to catch up to. But bottom line is this also. I also don't care because he's a rookie. And because he's been awesome so far, and the fact that he had such a crazy development is huge for the Padres. And I'm going to say it. Let me say it. As of right now, I have not paid attention enough to National League. I know Max Scherzer just got hurt. I assume Corbin Burns. I have him on one of my fantasy teams. He's been great. It is true that you probably have the two leading candidates, right? Three leading candidates. 
you probably have a guy who's going to be who's played like top five in Cy Young voting and Joe Musgrove so far. You have the guy who's clearly the national, clearly in my opinion, the National League MVP right now. Right now, I believe he eclipsed three or four already. And then you have the National League Rookie of the Year. I have not seen. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Seiya Suzuki which was a fair bet. He was going to play every day. And the numbers on him were basically saying the last guy to hit the way he did in Japan for as long as he did in Japan, the last guy who came over with that type of numbers ended up being like Hideki Matsui. And even still, he's been pretty good, but he's striking out a lot more for the Cubs. I'm only bringing up an analysis of Seiya Suzuki to let you guys know that Mackenzie Gore, as far as I'm concerned right now, is clearly the rookie of the year of the National League. And it is awesome. It is awesome. I tweeted a while ago. I'm going to actually, for my YouTube li- listeners, I'm going to uh, put this on the screen here. Hold on. Zeroni. Let's see here if I could find this tweet from last year. This is what I tweeted, right? Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, nope. I don't think you guys could see that very well. But all I said was, look, all I'm saying is I'm nervous that trading away Mackenzie Gore is like going back on your word with Madame Zeroni and that it'll haunt the Padres for all eternity. That's all I'm saying. A little bit of a holes reference for you folk. Um, Man, it is just... It feels good to be right every now and then. I haven't been right on everything so far. Luke Voigt has been a little bit of a miss of mine. And Robert Suarez a tiny little bit too. But uh, yeah, this is why you don't give up prospects. And you especially don't give up prospects just because they're struggling. Right? He has come up and he has shown everyone, everyone... Why he was a top pitching prospect in all of baseball. I know it's Grayson Rodriguez now or over out of Baltimore, but Hunter Green, you know, uh, Nick Lodolo, those guys were ranked above him by a lot of people for the start of this year. And guess who's performing right now? It's Mackenzie Gore. That fastball is electric. And absolutely, he is the national year as of right now. It is awesome to see. I can't get enough. A little bit of a longer episode today, guys, because I just have to keep bragging. It was great. It was so great because. This is a, the Giants are a good team, man. Uh, I, and I think that they're going to be a little bit better. They didn't have belt this weekend. You know, I think that they might have gotten a little bit unlucky with some fly balls and whatnot. Their defense, first baseman, what's his name? Was it Flores? Makes this weird, on a ball from the Padres, first baseman, that ends up being a reach on an error. He fumbles a foul ball, which then makes it, fa- I don't know what that was. It's, it's like the ball was made out of sticky stuff, or not even sticky stuff, like, it was made out of ice or something like that. He just falls all over the place. Really ugly baseball from the Giants uh, this weekend, for sure. Um, but I'll take it. Let me tell you, I'll take it. I'll take it. You love to see it. You love to see it, folks. And you know what else you like to see? You love to see the fact that we're not done talking Padres, guys. For the rest of this week, you can expect we're going to be talking more in depth about Joe Musgrove, hopefully on Wednesday's show, and then going to be talking tomorrow with my my guy, my new guy, uh, I should say, from the Lockdown Brewers podcast, Dominic Catronio. Hopefully I did that right. Oh my God. I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry, Dominic. He's one of the hosts of Lockdown Brewers. That chat we recorded already. It is coming at you tomorrow. And yes, you might be thinking, I've been talking a lot of crap about the Brewers. I told him that and he had a little bit of a rebuttal and it's a really fun chat. Uh, Dominic was great, great, great um, to talk to. And I can't wait for the series. And yeah, we're going to recap all of that. We're going to be talking about Joe Musgrove on Wednesday and Thursday. And then we have a series, if I'm not mistaken, upcoming against who's after the Brewers against the Pirates. And then you got the Cardinals. The good times are rolling, everybody. This is good. This is good. I love it. I love it. I'm going to keep wearing the shirt for the time being from my favorite game of all time. Please, guys, leave a comment if you would like. That all being said, that about does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from. You know, subscribe on YouTube. Please do that at Javapeno, J A V I I P E N O, or at L O underscore Padres. Leave me some comments. Let me know if you know where this shirt is from. It's kind of not too much of a deep cut. My favorite game of all time. And until next time, stay safe and, of course, stay faithful. My fire faithful homies, take care.